Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the workshop. It is brilliant to have you here. Fantastic to have you here, cuz the forge is hot. And even though we still need forge doors on this thing, we said we were gonna make forge doors and we forgot about it about six months ago. Today's project is to make a French naval boarding axe. It's gonna look a little bit like this. I'm excited to try some new techniques, some familiar techniques, and most of all, swing some hammers and have a good time. Before we jump in, put the steel in the fire, let's thank our sponsor. Today's episode is brought to you by our sponsor, Eero. They make a phenomenal Wi-Fi solution, and if you go to Eero.com forward slash forge and use code forge, F-O-R-G-E, at checkout, you're gonna get your Eero system delivered with free overnight shipping. You can have it tomorrow. Let's get into the video. So here are our materials. We have a three by one by three and a half. That is 75 by 25 by about uh, 82 millimeter long piece of mild steel. We also have this inch and three eighths or 35 millimeter. W1 high carbon steel material. Much like when we made the Grim Reaper scythe the other day, we're gonna be making the body of the tool out of mild steel and the bit, the blade itself, it's gonna be high carbon steel. This is a similar way that they would have been made historically, except they would have had a wrought iron body, a high carbon edge. We're not gonna do it the same way we made the side though, where we folded it. Instead, we're gonna split it and insert the high carbon edge. It's like you make a taco out of hot steel, and then you put your taco fillings in and forge weld your taco back together. So let's put the material in the fire! <laughs> Alrighty, so these are our parts. One piece of W1, thank you for grinding that wheel. One piece of mild steel, hot split down the middle. The next step is as follows. Mild steel piece is going in the forge. We're gonna close it up to the point that we can force into it our W1 high carbon piece. We'll heat both up and forge weld them together. Hopefully this goes well. Hopefully we don't spit out that tapered piece of steel. It feels like that's exactly what would happen. Hopefully it sticks and it's just easy peasy lemon squeezy. We got ourselves a boarding axe. Let's go to the fire. Ah, hot! Ah! You're saying that the forge that we're about to forge weld something out of is hot? That is exactly what I'm saying. No. This is a tricky weld to make, because it's trying to squish that piece out of there. You'll see in here, there's actually even a little bit of a hole from where it's not fully closed up. So hopefully as we forge it, it'll close up and get tight. Uh, but it's a worrying one, this is not an easy weld. I'm gonna take it to the power hammer. Uh, Let's see what the hammer does. It might have gone well, it might have not gone well. I still don't like the way that looks inside there. I'm gonna take another one or two welding heats. Hopefully it closes up, if it does, we're then going to isolate the blade half from the body and the spike and draw that material down.
Okay, folks, next step, we're gonna take this hammer eye punch and we are gonna punch open the hole. We have Will holding these pieces, which are acting as spacers to save bending it as we drift it. I'm gonna drift a little bit from one side. I'm gonna release it from the drift, just like that, flipping it over. And then we go back into the other side to open it up bit by bit. Okay, so here's where we're at. We have our hole opening up quite nicely, and we have a piece with a big fat end that needs to be a spike and a, a very non-blade looking section. As we go here, I'm gonna be alternating from drifting over the cheeks to forging down the spikes to working on the blade and hopefully a little bit by little bit without going too far too fast in any one place, we will end up with a perfectly sized eye, a nice spike and a good looking fanned out blade. With that, the axe is done. Well, it's forged, it's not entirely done. Okay, so now that we've got that blade forged out and it's cooled down, I take this nice piece of American hickory here. I'm gonna cut it up into a handle. The axe has cooled down. We've got the handle roughed out, um, and before we fit that up, we wanna do some grinding on this bad boy, uh, namely the main shaping of it. Grind the curve into the blade, and then grind those transitions in here as well. The spike and the, uh, and the eye all looks really good, and this transition here on both sides all looks really, really nice. It's mainly the profile grinding that we're gonna have to take care of. We're gonna do some angle grinding. That'll be very fast. That'll be the fastest for getting this stuff out. Then we'll slap a, a 36 grip belt on the belt sander and get her done. <laughs> Okay, so we got it all ground up. It's time to throw it in a Paragon heat treating oven for a little bit of heat. 
to treat it. So while that's heating up, I figured I'd go over a little bit of the history of the boarding axe. These were a pretty popular um, and common tool on every big ship, basically from like the 1400s until kind of the late 1800s. These axes were stationed kind of at each cannon, basically, uh, and so it was a weapon that they could use to first off fight off you know, people who were boarding their ship, they could grab one and go jump onto the other ship. Uh, but then that spike on the back and the way that it's designed is you can use it to clear out fires and stuff like that. That spike, you can grab like big logs, drag them out of the way, throw them off the ship, whatever. They're, they're the grandfather to the modern day fire ax that you guys, it's a pretty common shape with that kind of spike on the back. That's enough of that for now. We'll let that thing heat up and we'll give it the old quench. Will did a great job grinding that piece up, getting it ready for heat treat, setting up the fume extractor. Because the way we're gonna harden this blade is probably gonna cause a lot of smoke and fire and flashing. So I'm also gonna put a jacket on, some gloves and a face shield, and we're gonna harden it before we do a little tempering. That's good. Okay, okay, so we have that blade edge quenched. You see the mutton sight on it? Beautiful. But what we also have is we have a lot of residual heat in the piece. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scratch it up with a sanding disc. And we're gonna make the temper colors run all the way up from this hot section here to the edge so we can get it tempered. What I'm gonna do after this first temper is I'm gonna do a second temper cycle in the oven so we can get it very nicely stress relieved and toughened of that edge so it doesn't chip on us. You can see that light blue here is crawling up towards the edge. We just have to be patient and pay very close attention to not over temper. Got a pretty even straw on it. We're now gonna put it in the oven. After the temper, I gave it a wire brush. We put it back in the oil. It's looking phenomenal. All we have to do next is put the final edge on it and throw a handle in it. Okay, this is actually working really well. I need one of these for my kitchen. So, uh, to finish off, I very triumphantly spiked this into that OSB, and it was very challenging to get out, but that's what this is designed to do. There are, it's a fire axe. You're be able to, supposed to be able to stick it into things and drag them out of the way. What a great design. What a fun project. A great one. It has been an absolute pleasure bringing you along the making of this naval boarding axe. I hope you have enjoyed it. I have had so much fun forging it. We're gonna be giving it away to a follower of our brand new Instagram page, Alex Steel Co. Check it out. There's gonna be way more behind the scenes stuff, as well as more of our you know, bladesmithing, blacksmithing, metalworking supply stuff there. So go check it out, go follow. We're gonna be giving this away. And as we end the video, I'd love to thank today's sponsor, which is helping us get connected to the big wide world of the internet next door in the warehouse. And that is Eero. Today's sponsor has been Eero, and I'm gonna show you just how phenomenally easy it is to get their powerful Wi-Fi system set up. It's gonna go a little like this.
And that's that. It literally only took us a few minutes to get an entirely new Wi-Fi system set up at our next door shop. You download the app, the app walks you through it all, you plug and play, it could not be easy. It's so much easier than any other Wi-Fi systems I've set up and we now have this beautiful blanket of Wi-Fi covering the entire shop as well as this shop because we also have an Eero system that works with that right here. Eero is the Wi-Fi that your home or business like us deserves. The all new Eero starts at just $99 and that gets you an enterprise grade Wi-Fi system ensuring coverage at all of the corners of your home. You saw I set up those individual Eero units at different parts of that warehouse next door. Each unit communicates with the next one to create this web of strong Wi-Fi and if you have a larger home or you have a garden and you want to be able to sit in a lounge chair past the normal range of your Wi-Fi you now can with Eero. The Eero app allows you to manage and control how users are using your Wi-Fi. It means you can set cutoff times for the internet if you want to uh, help encourage good bedtime habits for the little ones. And overall, we are extremely happy with our Eero system. So please, guys, be sure to go to Eero.com forward slash forge and use code forge, F-O-R-G-E, at checkout so that you can get free overnight shipping on your new Eero system. Thank you, Eero, for sponsoring the video. Thank you guys for coming along. It's been a pleasure. See you on the next one. Bye-bye.